The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. A um, couple things to react to today. It's been a day of uh, two big kind of notices, so, you know, um, I'll talk to both. So first off, Jordan White, who is the soon-to-be XX editor, uh, being replaced by Tom Brevoort, winding up their Krakoa era, or this this arc. Now, keep in mind, I think, you know, editors are kind of naturally built to want to talk up these things like big moments in time. But if we've seen comics, I mean, again, if history is any indication, there's not going to be a big kind of, um, you know, a, a big like closing of the chapter and off into a new thing. It'll just be kind of that things will just kind of keep sliding around. And uh, the other thing is that um, Mags Visaggio uh, posted her um, her not taken shocking pitch for, I think in her words, turning Connor trans. Um, which would have, I think, again, in her words, um, Connie's been a dyke. Um, she always has been. And um, I am going to uh, trans this character. Um, okay. Our editorial did not pick that. So, so there'll be, yeah, so let's, let's talk. Boy, which way to go? Um, a lot of people are going to do videos on uh, the mag situation. So let me instead go to the, the Marvel one. Uh, to the uh, Jordan White and his interview, where Jordan White basically discussed uh, all the things kind of going on with the X Office as it wraps up. And, you know, there's a few, you know, uh, things in here. This is from the website AIPT, uh, which has uh, really tried to carve themselves off as being the X Men site uh, to do, you know, to do a bunch of things in comic book days. They really try to own that space. And as a result, a handful of the people involved are pretty toxic on twitter so i mean <laughs> i mean to say it with will look I'm, I'm sure it gets some kind of reaction um i know that several of them do watch the show here um but there's a there's a there's there, there's just a I, I put it this way and this applies to everyone everyone all the different sides in the culture war um fandom when it starts to feel more like fanatic than fan is is by a large unhealthy, you know, and so there is a certain it's got to be this way mentality that I do not think help franchises succeed over time, and so there's a lot of that kind of you know fanatic activity. Certainly nothing new to the X Men; it's been there forever. If you've ever gone to a panel in you know San Diego, I remember uh, I went to a panel back in like 2005, and uh, you know people are up there asking about maggot's backstory i mean there's just like there's stuff that goes on where you know clearly these are these are the, these people are not the mainstream and this is always one of those hard lessons for for any fandom to hear any kind of mass market product is designed or should be designed for the mainstream and if you cater to the you know the fanatics of the fandom rather than the mainstream of the fandom Pretty soon, it is not mainstream anymore. And I would argue that is a lot of what we've seen go on with Krakoa. Now, by the way, I did this uh, review of some things in, not not review, but some commentary on Hot Girl. And a couple people showed up in the comments like, hey, I love that comic. Good. Good. God bless you. You know, I, by and large, I, you know, there are very few comics where if you're a fan of it, I would think less of you. If, you, if, you, if you're finding your enjoyment for your three ninety five, I don't really care what you're enjoying. That's good. You know, no knock on that. A couple of people speculated that I didn't like uh, the portrayal of Hot Girl because I don't like marginalized people, uh, which are people who are not listening to the video or are just predisposed at this point to, if you complain about any of the comics in a certain category, you are therefore a Nazi. It's just how it works. Um, let alone the fact that the dialogue is bad, the stuff doesn't make any sense. This the hero is murdering somebody, actually murdering somebody, and, and, and does it in kind of this venting rant, um, it's like, yeah, but this is a conclusion of the arc. If it's an arc that was making her a villain, yeah. But again, if you like this comic, that's fine. No problem. Uh, what's that movie about the... There's some movie about, like... God, who did it? I, I reviewed it with Joe Corallo, uh, I think, and it was like a guy who was into animals, and he was a policeman. It, it, this is a comic book. 
Now, if you like that comic, then yeah, I'm, I'm willing to say you're, something's wrong with you. But by and large, like, if you like it, you like it. But X-Men fandom had a lot of these people. Anyway, um, not a lot of those people. A lot of people who are a little bit, you know, too keyed in to the characters. You know, by and large. Anyway, so uh, Jordan White comes in and he talks about, hey, I'm really excited to see what Tom's going to do. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, what's Jordan going to do? That's, that's the question. But anyway, um, you know, and they're going to make a bunch of big announcement at the New York City Comic Con, which will definitely have happened, um, you know, way, way before you listen to this video. Because I'm recording this now. New York Comic Con's a couple days away. And this thing isn't going to get processed for weeks. So, you know, hopefully some good announcements happen there. It's like a time capsule. Yeah. Anyway, um, we will see. I'm asking a lot of questions. But in this um, this thing, there are a couple of quotes that, that leapt out of me that I thought, uh, you know, I, I should um, I should definitely, you know, first of all, they talked about some some comics that didn't make the cut, which is kind of a crazy thing to think about. I mean, Marvel is uh, you know vomiting out titles left and right. So the idea that any comics didn't make the cut is pretty crazy. But there's one where they're going to do one within an Orcus prison. Uh, nobody said Orange is a New Black, but that was clearly where the pitch was going. There's one where they were going to do... Um, uh, one in space of adventures in space that seem to include the new mutants. Okay. Um, that sounds fine. Um, and then there's a lot of dumb bullshit in here about a bunch of characters are dead. And so they can't possibly come back to life. If they're dead, which I don't know why people are still doing this bit. They've been doing it for 12 years, but you know, when the whole storyline that you've been running with the X-Men for the last four years or so has been that they beat death. And they've got a, a method for doing that that's super easy, barely inconvenience that you saw even in a recent, um, you know, a, a, the, the last Immortal X-Men, a comic that came out before this interview was posted that showed that they had, they'd they got the resurrection shit going on again. I mean, like, the, what what is even going on? Uh, but but anyway, um, and there's some hate on Cannonball and some other stuff. But it's around the Cannonball thing that, that there started to be some comments and quotes about how He's a family guy, how he has a wife and a kid. And does this make the character less interesting? And then that segues into the uh, Jean Grey, um, you know, Cyclops dynamic. And, you know, oh, but Jean's definitely dead. So she's dead now. And Cyclops in prison. So what can happen there? And then, um, you know, they, they, they kind of then go to love, relationship and fandoms. And then, uh, you know, overall just when characters become an item and they talk he goes on for a while talking about uh, jubilee and the blob being a couple then remembers that when he was an editor he actually did cyclops or psylocke the cyclops and the blob they'll be very different uh maybe maybe on brand anyway psylocke uh and the blob and kind of how that was uh, that was going on but but in general it, there's a bunch of quotes here around marriage that are really, uh, for whatever reason, a prevailing view in, um, you know, in Marvel. So there's a difference between your typical X character, this is Jordan White talking, and your typical non-X character is that a random superhero in the Marvel Universe is more likely to have a solo book. Most of them are solo characters who have to work on their own. And taking a character like that and giving them a permanent relationship like a marriage has a lot of difficulties behind it. Okay, so right there, that's weird. That's just a very weird perspective. I mean, we are aware that comic books have supporting cast. We hear about it all the time. And every time there's a new relaunch of a book, they throw in a bunch of supporting cast elements and characters that are kind of fleshing out things. But here we're saying that if there's a marriage that it's difficult to deal with because it's a solo book and that breaks the... What? That's strange. Uh, but anyway, I, it, it, maybe he's talking about this in relationship to Rogue and Gambit, but still that makes no sense. Anyway. He then continues, I'm not saying there are no stories about married people, but I think they kind of change the stakes and they change what kind of story you can tell fundamentally. However, on the X front, mostly they're not characters we tell solo stories about. Mostly they're characters who are told about in a team context. I feel like that gives us a lot more wiggle room to do things with those characters that you might be less willing to do with a solo character. You've got characters who you go, you know what, let's allow these characters to get married. Just means you're probably not going to have many stories where everyone is flirting with Rogue, or who is she going to choose storylines anymore? Is that is that really a problem? As it was, I, I, I was there a lot of who's flirting with Rogue, or who is she going to choose stories? I mean, there was a few, but if I'm thinking about how that character has been defined for decades, I wouldn't that wouldn't be the top of my mind. 
Um, but anyway, um, and he continues, um, you know, the stories are going to have to be a lot more about her relationship with Gambit, whether it's working or not, how they're going to make it work. And it's the same thing with having children. It's slightly more likely or more acceptable for an X character to have a child than it is for a not X character, because some extent you can go, well, that character can become a parent character rather than the whole book is now about being a parent. Again, what? What What in the world? I, this idea of like, we have to tell stories where they're fucking around and flirting with everybody, or we have to tell stories where they're, how are we going to make my relationship work? It's a fascinating insight. And then they go into Cannonball, and they go, um, so with Rogan Gambit, this is Jordan White again, I can understand people feel strongly in both directions because obviously the romance is super fun. And see it paid off, you can go, hey, you know what? It worked for those two. Look at those crazy kids. They're in love. And sometimes they lie to each other and then they fight, but I feel like that could work. But it's not to say that I don't understand the other side, because again, there are people who love different things about these characters. I mean, is Gambit still going to flirt with everybody? Yeah. He's probably not going to be kissing as many ladies as he had back in the day. And wouldn't it be great to give Gambit his own series where he's going around the world stealing things and romancing women in every port? Yeah, but it's probably not going to happen while they're married. Anyway, I think they're great, I think they're fun, and I love that they have cats together. What? What What in the, what in the world? This is just a very weird way to think about relationships and storytelling. Actually, it's less about relationships, and more just storytelling in general. It's like, if we put these two characters together, then, you know, they, they, we can't. We can't tell an adventure book anymore because you can't have Gambit fucking women in every port. Nah, that's what people come to. No! You're telling me, is your imagination really so limited that a solo book with a character who has a relationship is like, man, there's so many things we can't do now. Like, uh, how... It, what? Where is the imagination of the creativity here? It's terrible. And then he continues with this. It's like, the character I like slightly more than the other is Gambit. Because I see some cool potential in him that I always want to do more stuff with. And is it a concern that it might dull the edges a bit to have him as a married guy? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Maybe it shapes the stories you want to tell with him. And the ideal story I might want to tell with Gambit might not be the one we would tell when he's married. But how weird. That's just weird. Um, I, you know, I... It's a strange, look, I guess what, what gets me here, and a lot of people go with, well, these are losers who never get married and don't know what uh, women are like. Right? I mean, yeah, sure, you, you can make those jokes, but I'll make an easier one or a more um, to-the-heart one. Um, this is a lack of imagination. You're telling me you've got superheroes, you've got this mythology that goes back decades. I mean, let's remember now, Gambit, appeared in the 90s, okay? Let's just count, 90 to aughts, aughts to teens, teens to 20s. We're, we're going on 30 years, 30 years of characters here. And you're telling me that, wait a minute, was Gambit, maybe Gambit was in the late 80s, now that I think about it. Anyway, well, regardless, we're going on 30 years. And 30 years of backstory, villains, characters, mythology, lore, literally thousands of villains and it's like man i'd love to tell a gambit story but i don't know can he fuck people or not if he can't I, uh, we're gonna have to do something about his cats that's I, where is the imagination forget all the things you've heard about you know not you know people who do not understand relationships and whether they're trying to push this agenda or that agenda let's just go with you're telling me you get a guy with energy powers, has a costume that, you know, yeah, reasonably cool. Maybe more cool back in the 90s than it is in 2023, but sure. And we can't think up anything for him to do. You're, you're with, like, he's a thief. You've seen the Ocean's Eleven movie. I mean, you, you can't do a heist. Like, you can't, you can't do a comic where he's got, it's like, you know what, I'm going to have to steal something for Doctor Doom and it's going to take six issues to do it. I'm going to have to assemble a wacky team and pull off a big thing. Uh, you know, Mark Millar, Miller, Millar, Miller, 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 Miller. He did a, that's a joke. Um, love you, Mark. Um, he did this Super Criminals book. Super Crooks? 
Remember this? It's a heist. You're telling me you can't do a heist, a fucking heist book with Gambit? You're telling me then you can't loop back around and do six issues of him? He's, I, I don't know, like he's trapped in Arcade's world and he's got to get out, but there's like, it's it's like an Inception thing where he thinks he gets out, but he, he isn't out and Arcade's using him to, you know, reveal the secrets of some X-Men thing. And he's tried, like, and then you, you, you tell me he's, uh, you know, oh no, you can get shot off into space and his powers really don't lend themselves that well to space, but he's going to go to a, uh, a, a world and he's got, he got warped to some other galaxy and he's got to find his way back using his charm. He doesn't know the language and he's just got to kind of figure out a way to get back home. I mean, like, yeah, I can keep going over and over and over and over. And in none of those comics do I have to deal with the fact that he is either in a relationship or not in a relationship. That's just strange. So to me, this stuff feels ridiculously limiting. And my question is, like, how in the world did we get to a place where the imagination factor in comics is so low, so incredibly small, that people can't, uh, that they're not, they're not able to tell creative stories but think about all the stuff with mary jane and what we've heard with spider-man and nick spencer and, and this is very revealing it's like well spider-man is a solo book and if it's solo book and we we haven't be married it, it's like impossible to write stories anymore because there's this other person going on it's a solo book what a bizarre insight into the minds of of a comic writer and editor but i believe it i believe that's what they think it explains a lot it's just weird it's super weird. And and so, you know, when we think about all these things, I mean, like, goddamn, this is why so many writers uh, are like, I don't know what to do with Fantastic Four. And maybe it explains some of these stories that they're like, we really got to hammer in the fact that there's kids involved. You know, another thing has kids and we got to talk about kids because he's got kids. And it's like, or, and hear me out here, you can have a comic where, you know, the Hulk is destroying some shit or so thing thinks. And so he's like, I'm going to take this guy out once and for all. We get six issues of him, you know, deploying to where the Hulk is. Only to discover it's like Wendigo or something screwing everything up. And, and Hulk's got to fight that, fight the Hulk too, and maybe team up. Like, and, and you can do those six issues without ever mentioning the kids. And he could, he could have kids, not have kids. Doesn't matter. I've said this before, and it's true. When Spider-Man, when Peter Parker, Spider-Man was married to Mary Jane, there were plenty of comics where there was no Mary Jane at all in the comic. Spider-Man was just like fighting for his life against Electro. That was it. And it it worked. You do not have to have him like, oh, shit, we're going to have to have four pages of him. Like, uh, he didn't, he's got to go home. It's like, oh no, so you didn't get food on the way home, Spider-Man, because you were fighting that villain. Now we're going to have to use DoorDash again. Now we're going to afford this on a model and a photographer's salary. I don't know. It seems really difficult. I Damn. Like, you don't you don't need to insert that stuff. It's okay. But anyway, the article's up there. Uh, there's some other interesting stuff in there, but by and large, the same kind of silliness you usually get out of this stuff of like, oh, maybe there'll be something deliciously evil coming up. <laughs> you know, you get a lot of that kind of stuff. I can picture, I can picture these people twirling the little uh, mustache as they uh, talk about their evil plans. Um, anyway, what do you think? I, I, I'm kind of, I'm just surprised. And in all fairness, this is way more fun ta than talking about Mags' insane plan to trans Connor. Um, which, by the way, I, it, does anybody else, like, if, you, if you're saying I'm going to trans this character, it feels like a slur. Like, I, 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 I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. It feels like somebody, a 80s bully in a, you know, a bad comedy would say. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, let me know what you think. Likes, comments, subscribers, all that kind of jazz. Thanks for listening.